In the mid 20th century, the United States entered a forbidding and dangerous time, the Cold War. A fear of the unknown ravaged the minds of the American people and the country longed for solutions and security. The answer to these cries was found in the increase of nuclear weapon production. Plants appeared throughout the nation, collectively creating a vast atomic arsenal and many new jobs for American workers. Yet these jobs themselves, that so duly represented progress and patriotism, unknowingly came with numerous health threats. At one especially dangerous facility, the Rocky Flats plant in Arvada, Colorado, confirmed suspicions of mismanagement and illegal actions triggered a series of investigations. Through these, officials learned of the severe ecological wrongdoings and validated health concerns of the employees. Although health and environmental damage had been accumulating at the Rocky Flats plant since its establishment, such harm was not exposed until brave employees, tortured by plutonium exposure, took the risk of speaking up to the FBI, causing the influential raid of the facility. This epic conflict led to the grand jury case of the United States versus Rockwell International Corporation, which forced drastic compromises to be made regarding compensation and environmental cleanup. In 1938, nuclear fission, the ability to split the nucleus of an atom into smaller particles was discovered. This finding led to a scientific revolution throughout the world. The United States government funded the Manhattan Project, which led to the creation of the atomic bombs that would soon devastate the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. With the United States' new technology displayed, the Soviet Union immediately began production of their own atomic weapons, spurring a race to become the world's biggest superpower. Because of the fear of communist spies discovering the exact hardware of the American bomb, plants were set up in diverse locations across the country. Colorado became a popular location for such plants because of the already present military operations and natural location. In 1951, the Atomic Energy Commission picked Rocky Flats out of 21 different proposed locations because of the already present military operations, such as the North American Aerospace Defense Command, which patrolled the skies for incoming planes and bombs, and the Rocky Mountain Arsenal that manufactured chemical weapons. Additionally, Rocky Flats was near western slope uranium deposits, had easy access to other natural resources, and was protected from natural disasters by the mountains. After spending $45 million, the plant was officially opened in 1952. Liquid plutonium-239 was deposited into steel spheres to create the pits that triggered nuclear fission when compressed by explosives, a crucial part of the bomb structure. Although some were concerned about the effects of the plant, most residents were hopeful that the plant would bring revenue into their town, provide new scientific and industrial opportunities, and put Colorado in the national spotlight. Uh, you know, the workforce there thought they had, and it did have, you know, very good jobs that paid well. Uh, they believe not only were they doing important work for themselves and their families, but for the country. Though the new establishment benefited their economy, the general public of the town had almost no insight into the operations at Rocky Flats. The Atomic Energy Act forced workers' confidentiality regarding the inner workings of the plant, and other federal laws prevented the sharing of the bomb production process. Behind this veil of secrecy were the egregious abuses in the regulation of plutonium-239, the most radioactive substance known to man. When safety investigations were conducted, Rocky Flats was discovered to have over 600 safety infractions. One of the most serious of these violations was the lack of fire safety measures. There were several fires at the plant, including the biggest industrial fire in U.S. history, with hundreds of tons of toxic material burned. Due to its ability to combust, when small amounts are placed in close quarters, the storage methods of plutonium within the plant were another area of great concern. The government licensed itself to dispose of radiological waste at Rocky Flats. It wasn't allowed to do that. It wasn't supposed to happen. It did. Much of the plant's contaminated material was stored in open fields of the plant in metal drums which leaked into the ground, releasing radioactive material into the environment. The plant also created solar ponds in which water was evaporated from the radioactive material, leaving a toxic sludge at the bottom of the ponds that was then pumped into nearby creeks. Regulation of waste disposal was so poorly managed that enough plutonium to make nearly 400 nuclear bombs became unaccounted for. On June 6, 1989, conflict broke out in Arvada. Over 70 armed FBI agents made their way to the Rocky Flats plant, most believing they were called in response to a potential terrorist threat. In fact, as FBI Special Agent John Lipsky informed them, they were there to collect a plethora of evidence proving the misconduct that had been occurring for decades prior. The conflict that followed was a three-day sweep of the plant, 
first unbeknownst to and later in defiance of dedicated workers. Many employees, worried about the security of their jobs, attempted to destroy documents containing alarming information regarding the infractions of the plant, while others were required to make copies held at gunpoint. According to Scott Saravchek, the legacy site manager of Rocky Flats for the Department of Energy, had the DOE been alerted of the FBI raid, workers would have attacked the agents. The raid was in June of 1989, and we uncovered specific environmental damages that eventually Rockwell pled guilty to in 1992. It was four felonies and six misdemeanors. This conflict, the first and only time one government agency has invaded another, not only revealed an extensive amount of new information about the inner workings of Rocky Flats, but demonized the plant in the eyes of the public. Production was momentarily halted while investigation continued. The ever-present dangers could no longer be ignored. On June 28, 1989, compromise was on the horizon. A federal judge decided to impanel a special grand jury to investigate environmental crimes at Rocky Flats. In February of 1992, the grand jurors wrote a 75-page report calling for the plant to be permanently closed. They voted to indict officials at Rockwell, EG&G, and the U.S. Department of Energy, but U.S. Attorney Mike Norton refused to sign indictments. On June 1, 1992, a compromise was made and Rockwell admitted to 10 federal environmental waste storage crimes and was fined $18.5 million in return for several severe drop charges. Later that year, a federal judge ruled that no information from the grand jury hearings could be released to the public and the jurors had to remain silent. As a result of the grand jury compromise, an $8 billion cleanup began on the land of the Rocky Flats plant in the early 1990s. The project was set to be completed by December 2006. The DOE, however, was done by October 2005 and $500 million under budget, yet somehow still meeting the Rocky Flats cleanup agreement. According to John Lipsky, this was a cover-up, not a cleanup. Contaminated concrete and infrastructure were considered safe when buried only six feet underground. The floor and one wall of the Building 771, often called the most dangerous building in America, were left standing, covered by only dirt and concrete. The presence at the plant changed the lives of those living around Rocky Flats. Two rivers near the site were found to be contaminated, and in 1989, the city of Broomfield had to change their main water source to avoid contamination. In 1996, Woman Creek Reservoir had to be constructed in order to prevent surface water from Rocky Flats flowing into Stanley Lake, the drinking supply source for a large area of Colorado. The long-term effects of this contaminated land were little considered when the cleanup began, yet the future would soon unveil the consequences. Life of plutonium, which is the principal concern out there, is 24,000 years. So it means that the current level of radioactivity in the soil due to plutonium will be around for many, 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 many generations. The threat of the plant was not destroyed with the buildings. Many of the workers and their families are still living with a constant reminder of the dangers of the site that comes with the glaring health issues. Countless ex-employees have come forth with diagnoses of various illnesses and disorders, including cancer, due to their time around the contaminated materials. In addition, due to the two major fires that occurred on the plant while it was in operation, along with the flooding of contaminated creeks that took place in 2013, traces of plutonium are being found not only inside the plant, but beyond the perimeters. Despite these worries regarding radioactivity for workers and visitors, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services opened the Rocky Flats National Wildlife Refuge in 2005. Plutonium had released from Rocky Flats had gone all the way across all of Denver and most all the suburbs between the plant in Denver and suburbs to the north of Denver. So it's in the environment, it's going to be there permanently. Many concerns about the dangers of radioactivity are being ignored on a larger scale as well. The fear of nuclear war is again burgeoning with ever-increasing tension between the United States, North Korea, and Russia. Yet again, the government is pushing to expand the national nuclear arsenal in order to bolster national security. Although some of the area surrounding Rocky Flats has been closed off to the public, right outside those fences is an ever-expanding neighborhood, Candelis. Like ex-employees of the plant, those who spent their childhood in Candelis have contracted life-altering diseases. Because developers and real estate agents are not required to disclose information about the history of the area, many uninformed homeowners are moving to Candelis, unaware of the risks that they are putting themselves in. It is clear that the conflict and compromise at the Rocky Flats plant are still endangering citizens and the environment today. 
More than ever, it is crucial to remember the words, those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it.